The UK and the USA, two nations divided by a common language and VFR traffic pattern entry procedures. Let's take a look. So we are primarily looking at arriving at the airport from the non-traffic pattern side. We're approaching Okeechobee from the east with runway 32 in use. This is a left hand pattern or circuit. The UK way of entering the pattern would be a standard overhead join. This includes a pass over the airport 1000 feet above the pattern to check for traffic, to check the windsock and any ground signals, and then proceeding with the join. The runway divides areas described as the live side, which is the side that the pattern is active, and the dead side, which is the side in this case to the east of runway 32 at Okeechobee which is the direction that we're approaching the airport from. And this is of course the opposite side to the side in which the pattern is published. Unfortunately the CAA diagram here shows us approaching from the other direction, but just take my word for it. I've just established us into a descent from 3000 feet to 2000 feet. With the traffic pattern altitude of 1000 feet, this gives us the 1000 foot clearance from any other traffic in the pattern. As we approach the airport, it's a good idea to start building up some situational awareness. We know that runway 32 is in use, so we need to identify it. A good way to do this is to use the direction indicator. Imagine the runway on the direction indicator and paint that orientation onto the ground. We can see a prominent strip in front of us, but the orientation is not correct, so we know that we're looking for an intersecting runway around 90 degrees to this one. It doesn't matter that it's not immediately visible. We now have the airport in sight and can begin maneuvering accordingly. The rest of the features will become clearer as we get closer. So like I said before, the idea is to fly over the top and have a good lookout for traffic in the pattern, the windsock and ground signals. The best way to achieve this in this case would be to maneuver slightly to the right towards the north side of the airport. As I'm flying on the left side of the aircraft, this will give me the best view out of the side window. So I've now maneuvered slightly to the right and already you can see there's a better view of the airport even out of the front window. So as we come over the top I should be able to look out the left side and get a pretty decent view of the airport in general. And you can also see now we're a little bit closer to the airport, runway 32 is in much better view. So now we can make out both the strips and be absolutely sure which runway we need to join. See I told you we were in the right place, I don't know why you doubted me. So now we're level at 2000 feet overhead the airport. Now as we positioned ourselves to the right of the airport we can have a look out of the left window while making a left turn over the field on the live side. You can see the runway markings clearly. If there was any traffic established in the pattern it should be fairly easy to see and we can hopefully hunt out the windsock at some stage. So here we are in the left turn, you can see runway 14 here, we know that the opposite end is going to be runway 32, so that confirms our initial thoughts on which runway was correct. We can see runway 5 as we come around the corner here, and uh, just having a quick look to make sure I'm still flying the airplane accurately. Having a look down to see if there's anything established in the pattern, it doesn't look like there is anything. And that looks like the windsock there, just off of the left side of runway 5, and it's favouring runway 32. So I haven't seen anything here that makes me want to delay the join. So what I'm going to do now is keep the left turn going, pass over the approach end of runway 32, back to the dead side, where I'll commence the descent to traffic pattern altitude, and merge in with any other traffic in the pattern. So I'm just passing over runway 32 now, that puts me on the dead side. I'm going to reduce the power and descend down to traffic pattern altitude while commencing another left turn which will take me over the departure end of runway 32 onto the crosswind and that's where we're joining the circuit. Now remember it is quite easy to get disoriented in this circuit uh, due to the fact you're making lots of turns and airports look very samey so it is easy to get mixed up on which runway you're on. I've seen people do it in real life and it's even easier to mix it up in the sim because of the two-dimensional nature of it you don't really get the spatial awareness that you would get in real life. The best way to mitigate that is to keep an eye on the direction indicator that kind of helps you keep your bearings. So we've just passed over the runway you see it just passed underneath us on the left hand side if you have a look at the direction indicator you'll see that we're at 90 degrees to runway 32 so that looks good that puts us on the crosswind leg as we just pass the departure end of it now we're at the end of the crosswind leg we can start a left turn to the downwind leg 
Once established on the downwind leg, we fly parallel with the runway we intend to land on, in the opposite direction to the direction we intend to land, and position ourselves for the next turn, which is the base leg, which takes us towards the final approach. So here at the end of the downwind leg, with the before landing checklist complete, we are going to reduce the power, start a left turn towards the base leg, and start to configure the aircraft for the approach. So taking the first notch of flaps, for example, slowing the aircraft down to an appropriate speed for the base leg, which is around 80 knots thereabouts and uh, then just closing in towards the final keeping a good lookout. Once you're happy like I'm doing here start a left turn towards the final and uh, I usually tend to cut the corner a little bit in the simulator which I don't do in real life because it's just easier to see the runway rather than keep looking around uh, using the free view uh, but you shouldn't really do that. And that's it, we're established now on the final, we go for four flaps, looking for about 65 knots as we cross the threshold of the runway, and uh, hopefully make a nice touchdown, and then we'll go and have a look at the FAA version. So here we are approaching Okeechobee from the east again. The FAA Aeronautical Information Manual recommends joining on a 45 degree offset to the downwind leg. We already know that we're approaching from the non pattern side, which makes the join a little awkward. The Airplane Flying Handbook suggests these options. The most common is the teardrop option shown here, quite appropriately called a teardrop join because most students end up messing it up and crying. So the idea here initially is pretty much the same. They say to arrive overhead at least 500 feet above the pattern altitude. I've done 1000 feet to be safer. We can fly overhead exactly the same as before, checking the windsock and the traffic situation. Okay now here comes the difference. I'm now flying over the traffic pattern away from the airport at approximately 90 degrees to the landing runway. The manual says to fly well clear of the pattern approximately two miles away should be sufficient, but a good lookout should be maintained at all times, and if necessary, fly further away. It's quite easy to lose your bearings during this turn, so what I've done here is I've bugged the runway heading, and that should allow me to constantly be able to center myself and figure out which direction I should actually be going. Okay, so that's approximately two miles away from the airport now. What I'm going to do is reduce the power and start a descent down towards the traffic pattern altitude. I'm starting a right turn now back towards the downwind. Now, if we're joining on a 45 degree offset to the downwind, we want to make a right turn here approximately 225 degrees. Now, I've bugged the runway heading, so 225 degrees to the right would put runway 32 and my heading bug here on this marker. So that's approximately where I'm going to want to make sure I'm rolling out and that will make sure that I keep my awareness as I make this turn. That avoids us from lining up with the wrong runway and causing all sorts of problems. So there's the runway just coming into view now so what I can do is roll the wings out and head towards the midfield point uh, which is approximately where we should be joining on the downwind and you can see that the heading bug has rolled out in approximately the correct place there and all I need to do now is just expedite my rear descent down towards the traffic pattern altitude as uh, I need to lose this height quite quickly because it's nice to join on a level portion as you join in towards the downwind. So there we go, there's the thousand feet, I'm just adding some power to maintain that and turning right towards the downwind. Now we're on the downwind leg, same as before, before landing checks should be completed around about now. Good lookout and we'll just keep our awareness and uh, make our turn when we get to the end of the downwind towards the base leg. That's the end of the downwind, power reduction, 10 degrees of flaps and starting the descent onto the base. Now the Americans do tend to fly slightly tighter patterns so I've tried to show that here. I've flown a bit of a tighter pattern than I flew last time. Now turning on to final, go for uh, the full flap configuration, 65 knots just like we did before and then uh, just fly the final approach and land just like we did last time. And that's the basics of the difference between joining in the UK style and the FAA style. 
Of course, in reality, everybody just does what the hell they want anyway, so I don't know why I bother making the video. So, here's the YouTube of it. Let me know in the comments, guys, which join do you prefer? Thanks for watching.